As you may already know, the traditional way to animate in Blender is with keyframes down here. So if we selected this default cube and we pressed I, and we wanted to keyframe the location, rotation, and scale, we just select that. And once we've done that, we would switch to keyframe, let's say 50. We might decide that we want the object to go over here, rotate like that, rotate like that, and rotate like that, and maybe scale changes. And then we'd press I, location, rotation, and scale, and we'd go back to keyframe one. And what would happen is, in our animation, we would see that exact thing happen. And it looks pretty cool, but one thing that it doesn't do, it doesn't actually reshape the mesh. The mesh remains in contact. So how do we animate this mesh deforming, changing shape? Well, one way to go about it, you can create a really cool glitch effect by doing this if you've got the time. Uh, we select a default cube. Let's start off with nothing. Let's go to keyframe one. First thing you need to do is go to edit, preferences, and make sure it's a default add-on that you can add on to Blender. Just make sure it's selected. It's called Anim All for animation all, which means you can animate everything, make sure that's selected, not just uh, you know the size of the mesh, the rotation and scale, but everything. And let me show you how it works. So if we, if we press tab to go into edit mode, and we select a single vert, uh, we can look down here, if we press N, click on Animate, Animal, and let's say we want to animate this point, we would insert a keyframe, and we would switch to frame 50, and then we might say, well, now I want the keyframe to go over here, because, and then you just insert again. And just like that, you can't see anything when you're in edit mode, so you have to go to keyframe one, press tab to go into object mode. So you start off with an object like this and you press spacebar, and you can see it grow and expand this way, which could be quite interesting. Deforms the mesh completely, which is super, super interesting. And obviously you, don't, you can do it with more than just one vert. You can select another vert, click insert, and you might decide, well, well, with that one over there, I'm quite happy. Now we're going to switch to frame 50. And now you want this to be over here. And then you're just going to insert. Now when we go back to frame 1 and we press tab to go into object mode, it looks like this. But then when we press enter, we can see it expand like that, which is quite interesting. So you can really create an interesting effect by deforming your mesh in Blender with an animation. But you could take this one step further and it won't necessarily yield a beautiful result. Let's click File, New, General, Don't Save. Start off with a default cube. We've got nothing at the moment. Uh, we're going to press Tab to go into Edit Mode. We're going to press N to get our menu to be here. Click on Animate. And we're going to click on Animate All Points. And we're going to select, let's say, this point over here. And the same process works, you can do it for each individual point. It is labor intensive, but you know, it's interesting. So we animated that single point. Because we animated that, we can pull up this graph, the, this uh, timeline over here, and we just have to switch to the graph editor. Now, if you look carefully, yeah, there's a little arrow here. Click, click on that arrow to expand it. Click on modifiers, add modifier, and let's, for example, use the noise modifier. And currently, if you press play, you can't see anything. Right, so let's uh, go back. Come on. Cube vertex six, okay. Here we go. X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. Now what you could do is you could say, you know what, let's increase the strength of this. And by doing so, once again, why don't you see anything? Because we are in edit mode. But if you press tab over here, you could see it going crazy. And you could play around with this. You could say on the y-axis, you might also want to add a modifier. And this and you could you could. 
One thing you probably want to do just to see it a bit better is maybe spread it out a bit, make it a bit thinner. And I'll do it for both. So it's a lot more visible. There we go. And you can create some really interesting procedural animations. And we can do it for the z-axis at the same time. And I'm just keeping it slow so it's visible. There we go. But you get the idea. Anyways, I hope you found this tutorial interesting. Hopefully you get some great ideas. Please show me your work if you got something interesting. I have no idea how we could use this, but it looks like loads of fun. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.